what's up guys, it's Track, and you remember when I bullied the little CO2 pistol for shooting just a bit softer than some of our modified pistols in the hobby? Well, it's Big Brother is here to teach me a lesson and hopefully it's got some serious power in store. This is the Rect Op 4, uh, which is clearly some sort of AR-15 uh, styled kind of variant from uh, the Rect people. It's designed to be a primary class blaster that's still using that CO2 proprietary technology. Now, let's see if this one can deliver the hits, but first let's check out the contents of this package as well as its uh, ergonomics and overall features. So we'll start at the top. We're compatible with most aftermarket darts. Hopefully that means that we have a barrel that can handle most aftermarket darts, which is to say 50 cal, which is to say ultra darts are still garbage. Uh, down here we have a removable 12 round magazine. Will the magazine technology be a switch hitter and go both ways or is it going to be more of a straight shooter and uh, only take competitive magazines but perhaps not function in competitive blasters? Up here we've got a vertical foregrip. This looks very easy for an airsoft company to manufacture. And then the selector switch is also the on off safety, which should be very familiar for some of you real steel jar heads. In the back, it looks like our CO2 cartridges are going on in the stock this time. Uh, hopefully, the stock is still adjustable, which it claims that it is. Uh, so I guess those are going in the buffer tube itself. And then uh, back here, it's just claiming 90 feet per second or 90 feet ranges uh, over here. Um, and that's just our distance, no FPS claims. Uh, although we've got everybody else going and then this one going completely straight, which would violate the laws of physics. Just bear in mind guys that this one was sent to me by my buddy Cliff over at Umarex and it might not be necessarily indicative of what the retail version is. I'm sure the blaster itself is, I have to believe that, uh, but I don't know if they're all gonna come with silicon oil for airsoft gun use. If they do, great. Um, if they don't, uh, that might just be to ensure I have smoother operation. Then inside here, this one says wrecked CO2 rifles. All right, so this is a list of features. It just goes on to tell me that the CO2 gun has already been silicon oil broken in, uh, which means that we shouldn't have to worry about the 12 shots to break in the valve for the first time. Uh, it's got a very strong spring valve, apparently. Uh, and then wrecked rifles seem to like the Dart Zone Pro and Adventure Force waffle darts. That's very interesting. That means that Umarex is at least on some level paying attention to our ecosystem and adapting into it. We happen to have plenty of Dart Zone Pro darts, so that's a good tip. Cocking effort is required to load the the dart and is very minimal compared to spring powered foam blasters and that would make sense you're just racking a slide you're not necessarily priming a piston system so it should be significantly easier uh, sound the loud popping noise adds to the experience compared to normal foam blasters is that a feature? I guess it just really depends on what kind of player you are. I'm always kind of stealthy in my operations. So while I think that it would be somewhat illegal to throw a suppressor on this guy, I don't know if I like loud popping noises when I'm using my blasters. And then just interestingly enough, from an industry perspective, we accept elite in quotes magazines, 18s, 25s, etc. And that's just a fun way of saying nerf without saying nerf because you can't say nerf. But this is YouTube, so I can say nerf all I want. Uh, grip must be in the rear position when loading and unloading the magazine. That makes a ton of sense. It does, in fact, have a bolt. Eye protection is required. And then it says, hashtag, have fun. It also comes with a full safety manual, which, uh, given that we're using CO2 in a plastic blaster, is important. Inside, we've got the blaster itself. Like I said, the CO2 oil, the darts themselves, and the magazine. The magazine is interesting. It seems to have a pretty robust spring inside for its follower. It's got a very funky angle here. This is a, the correct position for an in-strike uh, sort of magazine uh, release and attachment. And then uh, no other real like accoutrement. Underneath, it's uh, flat. It's like designed to look like an actual um, old school steel M16 magazine. All right, so let's prime it. And that is in fact a very clean and easy prime. It actually looks like they're using instead of priming bars like a top prime which reminds me very much of explorer throw the magazine home and that is smooth we've got a regular uh, sort of real steel release here uh, which is very interesting although it's not actually pushing this out it's just actuating the catch mechanism inside feels a lot like how a long shot works except it's a button instead of a pull the gas flap here has a hole in it i'm presuming to actually vent uh, some of the pressure but it's not going to flip open as it's injection molded into the shell other than that we've got a really I definitely have seen Magpul stocks like this. This is pretty robust, all things considered. Like that's solid and it's holding a lot of weight uh, behind it, which is quite, quite good. Uh, priming action. 
like I said, is quite smooth. And overall, this kind of like shocked out uh, deco on it is pretty cool. We've got Pictini on the front, all over this hand guard, and then we have pretty standard uh, mil spec style sights. This charging handle does absolutely nothing. Now let's go ahead and pull the stock off all the way, which if it's like, it should be. There we are. And inside here you can see our gas tube, which we're going to have to open up one way or another. And while it's a little bit tight, you can see that this is threading off. And inside we have space for our 12 gram. So we're gonna have to go pick one of those up and load it up inside. I think we still have one left over from the pistol review way back when. Uh, other than that, the darts unfortunately look really cheap, but that said, you're only getting 12 of them and you're gonna be using whatever your favorite kind of darts are very, very soon. These aren't quite uh, knockoff elites. They're closer to Vauberries. They've got the shiny hard tips. We will, for the sake of our initial FPS readings, use these darts, although we're going to put on record that we do not like these darts. Uh, other than that, sight profile, pretty standard. Uh, and I'm not gonna lie, it seems like a little small to be an M16, but like, this ergonomic is good. It's been adopted by a lot of different countries for a reason. <laughs> Feels pretty good. Let's take it outside. All right, guys, so theoretically, we have everything that we need to check out the Rect Op 4 Blaster. I'm not getting full prime there. I think that's because it has to be in fire to prime all of the way. Just food for thought. So let's uh, go ahead, start turning on our instruments, uh, leave the blaster on safe. Let's load up the magazine that it comes with. We've got a variety of different magazines here and darts to test with because we want to get you guys the most data we possibly can. This is the very uh, M16-esque very airsoft friendly sort of magazine uh, that comes with the blaster. Of note, you're gonna need 12 gram cartridges. You're gonna need two of them to power this bad boy up. So there's a burst valve in there like that. And then I guess you put them kind of butted up against one another because there is a burst valve in here as well. Now ours has already been uh, lubricated up, so we should be in pretty good shape. Let's get that where it needs to be. I'm assuming that this is just to lock the, uh, the chamber shut, and then we're gonna have to wait until this pierces them. I don't know how to know. Okay, I definitely just heard it. So that's, that must be good enough. And then we can close that up. Let's just kinda real quick throw it in fire. And prime. All right, that is admittedly a pretty cool noise. It is a brand new product. We want to get a few shots out just so that we know that we're uh, rocking and rolling properly. Let's throw this buffer tube back on top. And then once it's aligned, pull it all the way into tall boy mode. And that feels pretty good, all things considered. I think that we're uh, pretty happy with that. So let's put a few over the chronograph. These are again, the kind of Vauberry tips that the blaster came with. 106, 94, duplicate 94, 100, so about 100 FPS. I think pretty safe to say. Let's put two more downrange. And those are relatively straight shots. The CO2 is uh, doing an okay job of propelling these forward. Let's drop that magazine out uh, and just check real quick. So this is Nerf darts. Uh, actual genuine elite darts with these squishier tips uh, in a genuine Nerf magazine. If this looks like a knockoff magazine, it's because it came off of the Flight, which is one of the uh, cheaper blasters Hasbro has released in uh, recent years. So that's uh, that's locked in, and it doesn't drop quite as clean, but it locked in and seems to be just fine. So let's fire a couple of these over the chronograph. 109, 116. So those are much better. Uh, performance, given that the darts are lighter, it makes sense. You kind of get a little bit of a smoke effect off of this muzzle, which is sort of cool. Well, dang. That was actually rather impressive. That was a full 100 foot shot. That's not bad. Let's see if we can't line it up with the tree here. Can we hit? We're straight down the sights. We're aligned. We're proper. And elite darts. What are you going to do, guys? So the elite darts are pretty poor in terms of their overall accuracy, so we hit the fence instead of what we were aiming at. Let's go for a more accurate 
dart type here. So these are worker uh, Gen 2s, uh, and they're in an old Explorer style mag here. Or maybe this is an artifact. I'm not entirely sure. Let's put some half links over, see if this breach will fire half links. Oh. Okay, so that's a little erratic. Uh, it also doesn't want to let go of this one. There we are. Uh, just so you're aware, this magazine was not explicitly designed to fire these darts, so I can only really load a couple in. That's about all the spring will let me. So we're loading three at a time here. That first shot was very impressive. It was like Dart Zone Pro levels uh, of firing. It seems like right in that, uh, that 130. Well, this is, that's a little disappointing. Uh, we'll fire a few down range. These should fire straighter. Uh, but I think that given that the breach is clearly functional with half links, this is uh, pretty exciting. Well, it was functional with half links. This is unfortunate. That uh, again, so like not all darts are created equal. The worker darts have weird uh, tip glue and they wind up being of a lesser quality because of it. I brought out a bamboo dart, uh, which we'll get to in a second. I guess we were told uh, by Umarex that this did enjoy. Okay, so that was a relatively straight shot, but these are they're firing nowhere near as far as the full length darts, so the breach is definitely optimized. Uh, for full lengths, which is a little bit of a shame. Let's uh, test this out, just see. Dart Zone Pro Dart off of the breach. I think I was more impressed by how, I'm gonna hunt that dart down. How smooth that, that fired. That was very straight. Uh, it hit and went straight up. That was a pretty good shot. So 120 uh, from the Pro Dart. Uh, and we brought out some full length pro darts to get some good data on that for you. But uh, overall, this is, I'm significantly more impressed with the overall kind of action of this just because it is. I spoke too soon, boys. So, consistency is really important. It's more important to me than overall performance. So, let's load up a bunch of the same kind of dart we've been told. It likes the full length pro darts, which are in fact excellent darts per our testing. We've uh, done a lot of chronograph and accuracy testing with these and we were very pleased by the overall results. But we're getting kind of all over the place results from different sorts of darts over here. I wanna like this blaster. The priming action is indeed very easy. Uh, Jay, you're killing me. Um, the priming action is very easy, it's very comfortable. I think you're supposed to get a little over or around 100 shots out of the dual gram uh, sort of storage here. That's very exciting. And that's not, like why? Why can't I get consistent performance out of this? 177 laser beam shot, awesome. Error two because it was moving too slow, not awesome. 128, 93. 122. Bounce. I know, Jinx. What are we going to do with this thing? It looks like an M16. It feels good. It primes cool. It's a mag fed blaster. Uh, this could very easily be competitive grade if it was getting all 177s. Uh, but the fact that that one barely went anywhere and that one was a perfect competitive dead on shot. They're just sort of all over the place. So uh, I want to give my hat off uh, to uh, Umarex and Rekt. The Op4 is significantly better than its uh, pistol variant before it. Uh, it does not require multiple actions. Um, I think that this is a step in the right direction. I would, uh, I would really love to do some development with these guys just because there's been no work done with CO2 uh, in the hobby uh, just because... We don't have access to the kind of tooling and, and burst valves and all sorts of stuff that you need to make this happen. But as an old school paintball guy, I can see the merits in this. I just think that it needs a lot of refinement. This consistency is, uh, is nowhere near what you're going to want in a competitive sort of uh, segment. And so that's 108, 121, 112. 
and 94. So that was a tighter grouping, but on the lower spectrum, I really want to know what it would take to unlock that sweet, sweet high performance out of a blaster like this. Because I... I think that particularly there are some nerfers who have certain disabilities and they can't prime like 12, 16, 20 kilogram springs. And this is in fact a very gentle action. I can do it with my pinky, uh, no muss, no fuss, no problem. And then uh, I didn't originally, I wasn't super sold on it reading it on the box, but the, uh, the pop and the little CO2 plume that comes out is pretty cool. This break is kind of funky. Uh, with the notch into it like that. But overall, I, uh, I think that I'm not like sold on the platform completely, but this is definitely the better, uh, of the two that we've seen so far. It is a true CO2 powered M16, uh, quote unquote nerf gun. And it definitely is, uh, is more in line with what I saw at shot. Uh, so I, I'm a believer. I just think that it needs a little bit further to go. If you want to pick one of these up for plinking uh, in your backyard or for uh, airsoft, or if you are one of those people who has uh, the aforementioned uh, priming inabilities, I think that this certainly has merits, but you're going to want to do something with the barrel material, something with the breech, which is going to be a little bit trickier. Um, but I will tell you guys right now that if you leave uh, 2000 likes on this video. If you enjoyed this review, we spent a lot of time editing this one so that it would be snappy and fun for you to watch. Uh, if you do that, I will take this blaster apart and do a full breakdown of it. I don't want to say that I'll do a modification guide for it because I think that's where we start getting into the danger zone, but, um, I will break it down. I will take it apart. I will let you know what makes it tick and we'll see if there's any way to kind of get that kind of consistency out of it. Overall, Handsome blaster, wish it was red, uh, but I think that this is a step in the right direction for the wrecked brand. Well done guys, and I'll see you in the next video.